So we, we're going to have our first uh, speaker. Uh, it's uh, Carla uh, Gonçalves from, from uh, Porto. Um, Carla is a PhD candidate in applied mathematics from the University of Porto, Portugal, and she's also a researcher at uh, Inestec uh, in Portugal. So she's uh, co-hosting uh, the conference. Uh, she received the Master of Science in Applied Mathematics from the University of Porto in 2015, and her research focuses on probabilistic and collaborative forecasting methods with a special emphasis on renewable energies. Uh, our talk today is titled Forecasting uh, Conditional Extreme Quantiles for Wind Energy, and she has a number of uh, co-authors that will be indicated, I guess, on the first uh, slide. So the floor is yours, Carla. Thank you, Pierre, for the introduction. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, okay. Hi, everybody. So today I will present the work we did about forecasting extreme quantiles for wind energy. Uh, given a set of covariates, such as weather forecasts for multiple locations around uh, wind farm. Um, so, first I will talk about motivation for this research, followed by the brief review of the existing techniques for the probabilistic forecast. Then I will present the proposal, as well as the results for a case study. Uh, and finally, the main conclusions will be summarized. So about motivation, uh, as you know, renewable energy is highly variable and uncertain given to the meteorological phenomena and these properties bring new challenges to system operators uh, and market players. So a poor forecast of extreme quantiles can have a high impact in different decision high problems, in particular when decision makers are highly risk averse or the regulatory framework imposes high security levels. Uh, in fact, many satisfying approaches already exist to forecast quantiles between 5 and 95%, uh, but probabilistic forecasting of distribution tails, I mean quantiles below 5% and above 95%, is challenging uh, because data for extreme events are scarce. So therefore, new methods using concepts from extreme value theory need to be developed to uh, forecast the extreme uh, quantiles. So um, the existing methods for quantile forecasting can be divided into two groups, uh, the parametric and the non-parametric models. The parametric models assume that data is generated uh, from a known probability distribution whose parameters are estimated from the data. The main advantage is the low computational cost, while the main disadvantage is that the choice of this parametric distribution is not obvious. On the other hand, the non-parametric models uh, do not make such assumptions. So the main advantage uh, is those non-parametric models do not assume a parametric function, but uh, requires a large number of observations to achieve good performance. Uh, this represents a challenge since data for extreme events, as I said, are scarce. So a possible, given that, a possible solution to fit the probability distribution of wind power production would be to model the intermediate quantiles uh, using uh, with a, a non-parametric model and then uh, the extreme quantiles with a parametric model. So to summarize, uh, in terms of non-parametric models, uh, quantile regression and gradient boosting trees are two widely used uh, methods. The linear quantile regression assumes um, a linear relationship between power and covariates, which is uh, a strong assumption. On the other end, the gradient boosting tree model, GBT model, allows capturing more complex relationships uh, by combining regre regression trees recurrently on modified data. But as I mentioned before, these methods can achieve good performance for quantiles between 5 and 5, 95%, but their performance for the tails uh, is poor. So now about the existing parametric methods for extreme quantiles. Um, this is one of the methods used to predict tails for wind power. First, a non-parametric model estimates the quantiles between 5 and 95%. And then uh, the, the tails are extrapolated through exponential functions, which depends on only one parameter, 
which is estimated through maximum likelihood estimator. So in uh, extreme value theory, the generalized Pareto distribution is widely used to predict extreme events. This parametric function depends on three parameters related to the location, scale, and shape of the curve. Uh, the shape parameter allows capturing three different uh, types of tails. So lightweight tails, uh, tails exponential tails, and the heavy tailed uh, tails <laughs> uh, distribution, sorry. Uh, so the extreme quantiles are, uh, these parameters are estimated through maximum likelihood estimator. Um, so the extreme quantiles are estimated by fitting the GPD distribution that better adjusts um, a sample of values. The question here is which, which sample should we use for each prediction horizon to correctly represent uncertainty for such an hour, given a set of covariates. Uh, two papers uh, lead to this problem by using linear quantile uh, regression. So the first uses quantile regression for estimating a large number of quantiles, including the extreme quantiles, and then apply the extreme value theory to these quantiles. So this means that the extreme value theory is used as a post-processing stage. But as we discussed before, the, the non-parametric models have poor performance for extreme quantiles. Uh, besides, assume a linear relationship between covariates and target is a strong assumption. Given that, the same authors uh, proposed uh, to transform the wind variable first through power transformation and then apply the same for framework. Uh, so here we have two limitations. Uh, first, extreme quantiles are or original, uh, originally estimated through a non-parametric model. And secondly, the GPD uh, assumes power values between zero and uh, plus infinity, which is not uh, realistic. So since wind power generation is limited between zero and installed capacity, uh, we should consider the truncated GPD uh, distribution. Um, and uh, in this case, Verla et al. provide an estimator for this truncated GPD, uh, but do not consider that the variable to be predicted is conditioned by covariates. Then uh, for each prediction horizon, our challenge is to construct a sample that captures the wind power uncertainty given a set of covariates and then apply the truncated GPD to uh, estimate the, um, the extreme quantiles. Okay, so uh, in summary, we propose to combine uh, intermediate quantiles estimated with a non-parametric model here. Um, and the extreme quantiles or tails uh, with a parametric model, which is the truncated GPD. Uh, since non-parametric approaches do not properly estimate extreme quantiles, um, we propose to apply the extreme value theory directly to historical data. And the selection of the relevant historical data to estimate the truncated GPD is guided by the non-parametric model. So I will try to explain it in more detail. Uh, so uh, our proposal consists of the following steps. Uh, first, the GBT models are trained and the quantiles between five and 95% are predicted for each historical time step. So for each training observation, we have uh, an uncertainty curve quantiles between 5 and 95%. Uh, then, when a new time step, uh, then when predicting a new time step, the covariates for this new time step are used to obtain the uncertainty curve through the GPT model, the trained GPT model. This curve is compared with the historical ones by using the Kolmogorov statistics which defines the distance between two curves as the maximum distance between the points of the two curves. Then, aiming to select observations that can 
represent the inferior, inferior tail, uh, we use this simila similarity metric and select the historical power values with the most similar uncertainty curves and smaller than the quantile 5% predicted by the GBT model. And uh, the same is done for the superior tail. But uh, the extreme uh, value theory requires that the sample uh, represent more uh, than the extreme quantile. So we also need to represent the middle of the distribution function. And uh, since the central part of the distribution was estimated by the GBT model, the 90% values that represent the central part of the distribution uh, are sampled from a spline interpolation constructed from the discrete curve estimated through the GBT model. So with this, we, we have a sample and we can apply the extreme value theory estimator and, um, and obtain the extreme quantiles. So um, you know what follows the case study is presented. Um, the wind power data is from a wind power plant in Spain. The historical period is almost three years. The covariates used in GBT models uh, correspond to the spatial and temporal information extracted from a numerical weather prediction grid uh, with 13 by 13 equally distributed points and is related to UNV component, uh, components of uh, the wind as well as the wind speed model and direction. So the proposal is evaluated through three different uh, metrics. The calibration, uh, which measures the mismatch between empirical and nominal probabilities. Uh, for example, 25% uh, quantile should contain 25% of the observed values lower or equal to its value. The sharpness, uh, which corresponds to the average interval size between two symmetric quantiles, for example, the mean distance between the quantile 10% and 90%. And finally, the quantile score, which assesses uh, the currency of a quantile forecast by weighting the difference between the observed power value and the estimated quantile according to its sign. So in terms of uh, benchmarks, we have two naive models, the GBT model directly applied to predict extreme quantiles and the truncated GPD directly applied to the data. Uh, then we have the exponential tails, the first non-parametric method that I presented uh, and um, the methods using extreme value theory as a post-processing stage. So in terms of forecasting skill evaluation with the quantile score, um, the first line of this uh, table shows the improvement over the baselines for all the extreme events. Uh, I, I'm, these are the extreme quantiles that we are considering when uh, computing this rel relative quantile loss improvement. As can be seen, it is um, greater than 3.7%. So our proposal also performs uh, all the benchmarks. Uh, and then in the remaining lines, we have the quantile score for each method. Um, for specific quantiles, the first one is the 0.1% quantile, then the 1%, 99% and 99.9%. As can be seen again, uh, our model auto performs the, the benchmarks. Okay, now um, in terms of calibration and sharpness, uh, in the left, left figure, we have the calibration plots for the lower and upper tail. The dashed line is the perfect calibration. Uh, the blue triangles are, uh, represent our proposal. And uh, as can be seen for the superior tail, we have uh, a very good uh, calibration when compared with the other models. Uh, for the lower tail, the, the calibration is not so good. But uh, when we analyze the sharpness uh, in the right plot, uh, we can verify that uh, good calibration comes at 
the cost of larger uh, uncertainty intervals. In general, the quantile regression models has good um, calibration for the lower tail, but the associated um, uncertainty intervals are larger. So to conclude, uh, accurate forecasting of distribution tails remains a challenge. Um, since data, given the data sparsity, uh, two measure benefits are provided by this work. The covariates are used to produce conditional forecasts of quantiles without any limitation in the number of variables. And the parametric extreme value theory based estimator can be combined with uh, any non parametric model uh, without measure modification. Uh, there are uh, topics. There are also topics for future work, which consist of inclusion of information from weathering samples, uh, generali generalization of the proposed method to other energy related time series, and uh, it is also necessary to develop new uh, proper scoring rules uh, to evaluate the forecasting skill of extreme quantiles, which are uh, rare events. So thank you very much. Thank you, you, uh, Carla. Thank you. Uh, very nice, uh, very nice timekeeping. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Uh, we, we have a number of questions. Do not hesitate to, to add your questions. So here, Carla, can you see the, the questions also? Uh, let me explore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can okay. read the, the question. I have a first question. I will I ask a few questions myself, but I'll, I'll ask the question of others uh, first. Uh, do we have a question from uh, Jao Yuan? Uh, what is the theoretic foundation of the proposed mixed parametric and non-parametric forecasting approach? What if the results of the parametric and non-parametric uh, forecasting are not consistent? Uh, that is, the estimated intermediate quantiles do not follow the same probability distribution as uh, for the estimated extreme quantiles. Did you get the question, Carla? Uh, okay, so uh, I'm seeing it, okay. So about the first part about uh, theoretic foundation, so it, it is hard to, to select a parametric model that completely uh, adjusts all the curve. So we think it is better to, to mix both parametric and non-parametric. Um, so about uh, what is, what if the result? Yeah. What if I they are mean, not consistent? No, but they are consistent because we force, uh, can you see? Okay, they are consistent because um, here, when we select historical power values um, with similar power curves, we also force that they need to be uh, the most similar as possible um, and smaller than the quantile 5% estimated through the non-parametric model. So we force mm -hmm. to have values uh, smaller than the quantile 5% estimated through the GBT model. And the same for the quantile 95%. Okay, so, so it's really by design that you ensure that you have this consistency, right? Yes. Okay, I see. We have another question, <coughs> sorry, which is by uh, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan uh, I'm not sure of the, the best way to pronounce, sorry for that. Um, so Jonathan is not sure about this question, <laughs> but I think it's a very good one actually. Jonathan is mentioning uh, the, the problem of correlation or dependencies between the time step or the, the lead times. And I think it's, it's true, you know, it, it's nice to think about extremes on a, on, on a marginal basis, you know, for a given lead time. Mm -hmm. But eventually, you, you may want also to be able to predict that this extreme effect is uh, some dependencies, right? So you, you can stay a very uh, long time in the very tails of distribution. So have you thought of this extension for, for, for the dependency case? Uh, about the dependent. Uh, to be honest, no. <laughs> but yes, I'm seeing. Yes, because we don't look exactly for the, um, the correlation, we just look for the, um, the, the curves estimated through the non-parametric quantiles and see if they are similar or not. So we are not looking exactly for the correlation between time steps, but uh, yes, it could be, 
guess it's actually, very, uh, an interest, interesting Actually, point. I think you, you, you could use the same kind of idea that's been uh, proposed for going from predictive densities to scenarios, you know, because actually these methods uh, using copulas are normally made for extremes. So, so it, it should be possible to actually use uh, copulas Different. for dependencies within the middle, the central part of your distribution, and some yes. other copula that's made for extremes, also for the, the tail behavior. Yes. So, so you could have a mixed, uh, mixed copula uh, setup. Yes, it is an interesting okay. comment. Thank you. Yeah, I think Jonathan, very, very good question because I think um, talking about applications, you will have a lot of your potential clients. So let's call them clients. Uh, first, they will be, let's say, um, looking for what of this uh, description of the, the extremes, but eventually they will realize that the, the real problem with extremes is when there are these dependencies, right? But it makes things much worse. So, so I think it, it is a necessary extension and it, it's, it would be super nice if you, if you think of it. Yes, right, yes. But, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, we're going to clap uh, virtually uh, to say thank you for, for a good talk. Uh,